This footage was shot on the salmon nets at the mouth of the River Spey in 1993, which was actually the last year of the fishing before the nets were taken off. A shot, which is what fishermen call the cast of the net, starts at the top of the pool, with half of the crew in the cobble and half holding the net and walking down the bank. In the cobble we've got Chris laying or shooting the net and Ewan and Kenny on either oar. On the bank there's Ross, Alistair, Geordi and Eric holding the other end of the net. The aim of the shot is to cast the net around as large a part of the pool as possible. Kenny and Ewan are rowing the boat quickly across the top of the pool with the aim of getting the boat as close to the bank as possible before heading downstream. The boat that they're in is a cobble, which is a flat bottomed and clinker built boat, which means that the planks down the side are overlapped rather than abutted one to another. This clinker built style of boat building is common down the east coast of Scotland and the northeast of England. The cobble's flat bottom was ideal for use on the spay, which often required crews to jump out and haul a boat over the shallow braes between pools. This was particularly important in the summer when the water could get very low. So now they're at the lower part of the pool, they're starting to turn back upstream slightly and make for the bank they set off from in order to close the net and trap the fish. This is the hardest part of the shot because they're trying to row as quickly as possible to stop any fish escaping from the bottom end of the pool. However, the current picks up speed as it leaves the pool and spills over the next spray, so they're pulling hard to close the net as quickly as possible. Now they've reached the scap, which is what the locals call the shingle bank of the river. The boat is grounded and you and Kenny and Chris jump out of the cobble, take their end of the net and start hauling it in until we meet the other half of the crew walking down the scap with their end of the net. As I mentioned, the nets on the spay were taken off in the early 90s. Many other Scottish salmon fisheries were closed around this time. This was a response to a significant drop in salmon stocks. However, this fall was almost certainly caused by huge factory ships in the salmon breeding grounds off Greenland and Iceland. The much smaller scale onshore fisheries which had been fishing sustainably for hundreds of years, were much more visible and in my opinion had to pay an unfair price. In recent years, salmon stocks have fallen much further, mainly as a result of climate change, and there is little prospect of seeing salmon nets on Scottish rivers anytime soon, which is a great shame because the loss of the nets had a big impact on small communities all around Scotland's coasts. It's all too easy to dismiss the decline of the Atlantic salmon population and the impact this has had on the small fishing communities across Scotland as a relatively minor local issue, something that doesn't matter a huge amount in the grand scheme of things. Perhaps, unsurprisingly, I don't see it that way. I think the demise of the onshore salmon fisheries asks much bigger questions about how we manage our natural resources, protect our communities, and preserve our natural heritage and identity. It is of course vital that we conserve our wildlife, but how are we also to protect our communities and their traditions? And this isn't just an issue facing our fishing communities. Climate change and the efforts to protect against it are going to have widespread impacts for many people who live and work in our countryside. Now, back with the crew. This is a really good bag of fish, and it looks like there's over 30 grills there, and at least one decent maybe 15 pound salmon. Even at the height of the salmon fishing, this would have been a good shot. Though by this point, catches had dropped significantly, so this is really an excellent bag. Now the fish have been landed, you can see Kenny and Ross dispatching the fish with a short stick called a priest.
Each shot took about 20 minutes from beginning to end, and there was usually a break of about 40 minutes between each shot to allow the fish scared down the river by the previous shot to move back up river into the pool. At the end of each day, the fish were taken down to Tugnet, where they were stored in the grass-reefed ice houses, until the wholesalers and dealers came to transport them down south to Billingsgate and the other big fish markets of the south. Finally, at the end of the shot, the boat is hauled back up to the top of the pool. This was often done by hand, with the crew all hauling the boat up on a long rope. However, this year it was possible to use a tractor on this pool, so it made the job a lot easier.